am Katie Wagner from Utah State University Extension Service in Salt Lake County and we're out here at Wheeler Farm in the USU Extension Demonstration Garden. And today we're going to talk about how to construct a simple raised bed to last. And so I have Michael Baird here and Michael is from Silver Creek Garden Beds. Uh, he literally builds about 500 beds a year and so he's got a lot of tips and tricks to help us to better understand how to build a great raised bed for your garden. So first of all, Michael, I want to start with materials that you might use okay. and, and types of wood. And I know that you brought a couple different uh, yeah. pieces of wood here to show us. Well, I, I like to use cedar or redwood when I build my garden boxes. I like cedar and redwood because they last, they're naturally rot resistant, they're naturally pest resistant, they'll last a little bit longer than some of the other woods choices that we can use. And I think that they weather pretty. This is a piece of cedar that, you know, is, you know, four or five years old that's weathered in the sun. It'll eventually turn gray. Um, but yeah, that's really but pretty. It, that's... But it'll, it'll, I like the color. It'll last. This color won't make it last any less time. You can stain them to keep the color bright, and, um, but you don't have to. They'll be just as strong with or without it. So I really like that. Great. Reason. So if you want to go with a natural type of a wood, mm -hmm. um, a cedar or a redwood will be naturally rot resistant. Mm -hmm. Can be a little bit more expensive lumber to purchase than say pressure treated lumber. Yeah, pressure treated is cheaper. Um, I don't really like the look. Uh, most of my clients don't like the look, but I do get people who want it to last a lot longer. The, the pressure treated will probably last a little bit longer, but we also add chemicals and and uh, once again, it, those aren't a huge issue. It's not going to kill you to use those, but I try to stay away from them when I can. So if you are using pressure treated lumber, mm -hmm. if that's what's available to you, mm -hmm. and you wanted, um, say, to ensure that you didn't have any sort of chemicals from the wood mm -hmm. leaching into the garden soil, one option is, is that we can line the bed. Yeah. And you did bring some lining materials. I yeah. did. This is, this is, uh, that, that's the, that's just what they come in. So. This is an industrial weed barrier from one of the nurseries. Sorry, we've got this sitting here. Um, I typically cut it down. I'll just cut a whole roll in half, and then I got the perfect size for my beds to line them. But I use these uh, to keep the, you know, the chemicals out, and also to keep the soil in. A lot of times when you build boxes, the wood will have knot holes. It'll have imperfections. I mean, it's a wood box, so. I keep the soil from leaching through the outside of the box with something like this and make the boxes last a little bit longer as well, no matter what wood you decide to use. Okay, that's Things great. Like this are here. And probably one thing that's really important to mention too is that if you do plan to line the sides of your box, you mm -hmm. want to make sure that you don't line the bottom as well yeah. because you want to make sure that you have an avenue for water to escape and drain yeah. away. If so. you're using some of these weed barrier cloths, they actually will leach water through them. If you've got one like that, if you've got a large problem with weeds, you can put that down on the bottom. It'll still leach the water, but you won't get some of the weeds up through the bottom. But I would never do it with a plastic. You know, you, I want to be able to have it drain. And so, I know you were mentioning a little bit too, with some of your experience with using plastic as opposed to the weed barrier cloth, some of the problems that you've yeah. noticed over the years. Like, you can get UV resistant plastic, but plastic degrades. And that's one of the biggest problems I've had with it is that in, a, in as little as a year, any plastic that's exposed to the sun is going to break and get brittle and fall apart. And it's just, it's a total mess in my box. And so I've switched to the weed barrier cloth because it just doesn't degrade. It'll last 10 or 15 years without it falling apart. If I get the good stuff from the nurseries, you can get it from a number of stores, but I try to go to a local nursery and find heavy duty industrial stuff. It's a little bit more expensive, but not much and uh, you can find it any nursery nearby. So Great. that's the stuff I use. Okay, so maybe let's talk sizing of the boxes yeah. when we're um, doing our measurements and getting ready to build our boxes. Mm -hmm. uh, what might be an ideal size to build your box at? Um, I had a number of people ask me for really large boxes, but the bigger the box gets, the more soil you need as well, and it's harder to reach the middle. This box is three feet wide. That's the inside measurement here, which means that when I'm on the outside of a box, I can reach the inside really easily. And I like to be able to sit when I garden without having to bend or, or stretch or, or fall over and not put any pressure on the soil. Anytime I put pressure on that soil, I compact it, which is one of the reasons we do these boxes. We don't want the compacted right. soil. We want 
nice great soil so anytime I push down on it or step on it I make the soil harder and the plants harder to grow so okay great so that three, three, to, three, to, three to four feet yeah once again it's up to you how wide you want it just what's ever comfortable for you if you're a shorter person do two and a half foot wide boxes you know uh, I use three or four feet because the wood usually comes eight feet and I've got really easy measurements I can cut a board in half and I don't waste a lot of wood as well that's okay. a nice thing to think about okay. Hey Michael, so uh, we talked a little bit about width, but how long can you build your raised beds? So that's just going to be dependent on the wood that you get. You can, most wood will come about 8 feet. You can get lengths 12 or 16 and people, are, a lot of people will, will lean towards that because they want one big long box. But one of the problems with the long boxes is the wood warps. All that soil behind your box is going to put pressure on it and the longer that box is, the more pressure it is and your box won't stay square over time and that's one of the biggest problems we have people do 16 or 20 foot length beds and they have them turn into large ovals after a couple years also I never would when doing a box I always want one solid piece per side I don't ever want to connect boards like this because that's gonna that's gonna put pressure on it if I build a box with the two ends sitting together like this eventually the woods gonna push those boards apart so I want my boxes with one solid piece per side not multiple pieces per side if I can do it so great so six to eight feet is really good without getting warped you know the, the, the boards don't warp and so if I want a 16 foot length I do two eight foot boxes instead of one 16 foot you'll have better results and I get pathways between those boxes that I can walk through and I don't have to fill those with soil you know a tomato plant so large you know, when I put a tomato plant in, it can spill over the outside of the box and I don't waste space. If I just have a giant box that's covered by plant material, it's a waste of space. So, Great. So. Okay, so I guess let's get into the nuts and bolts in terms mm -hmm. of putting a box together. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe you would mind sharing with us um, what kind of materials you're going to need to okay. build a raised bed. So you're going to need uh, you're going to need a couple different saws. You're probably going to need a table saw, at least a circular saw or a, a chop saw. Um, the materials, or sorry, the the saw you use isn't as important as just that you, you use proper safety methods when you do it. Safety glasses all the time and, and you know, using the safety features of those things involved. Absolutely. Um, I also like to use coated screws whenever I do my boxes. You can see I've got coated screws. Those are going to uh, stop, um, it, sorry, coated screws will uh, not leach ugly colors onto your box in the future. So if people have to see those screws, then they won't discolor the wood around it if you use a coated screw. Uh, you'll also need to drill. Um, we talked about this earlier. You have to pre-drill your holes in wood. Any type of cedar or redwood splits really easy. And so we, we drill a hole with a drill bit first and then put our screw in at all times. Especially because a lot of the times when we do these these screws we go really close to the end of a board and on the end of a board we're gonna have a, a higher likelihood of that wood splitting if we don't pre-drill a hole so drills saws and then coated screws is my biggest thing for people great and you actually brought a couple of sort of corners that mm -hmm. are built here mm -hmm. and uh, maybe you don't mind just sharing with us kind of the construction of the corner no. I know that anchoring the corners and raised beds is, is really important that's no. one of the common mistakes I see is that people don't anchor the corners properly and then the wood starts to split away at the corners just with all of the weight of the wet soil, the water yeah. um, pushing out against the corner of the well, raised bed. Well, a number of raised beds I see would look like this in the bottom. They'd actually just put that straight onto their soil and uh, that's just a, a huge mistake. I've seen that if instead I built, just leave my corners a little bit longer, just a few inches like this, I can actually dig a hole and bury that in the ground and then this box doesn't bow and change shape as fast. So it's not a lot of extra wood to just make these, whether you do them internally or externally, and we'll show you that in a second, an external frame. Um, we need to do something to anchor them in. So this one we use just a little bit longer piece of wood because I already have it. Um, this one I used a four by four. Once again, I can bury this little extra piece of four by four. This will be a little bit stronger. It'll last a little bit longer than this thinner board. Um, but you can also use materials like rebar or um, cement stakes, you know, just to pound some rebar into the ground 
um, and you know, put that rebar on the outside of our wood so that there's something that's holding our wood from changing shape over the, over the course of the life of that box. I want to be able to make these things look good from day one and last us for years and years. Sometimes you know? too, if you have those things on the outside of your raised bed, it can be a nice uh, sort of vertical growing structure mm -hmm. for some of our vining plants, uh, whether it's a vine tomato or peas or some of those sorts of things to actually climb up and so it can kind of uh, form a different function. I, raised I've stuff. done plenty of raised beds where we have rebar that we've pounded into the ground a foot and then we've left it two or three feet high on the outside and they just run strings across the outside and we'll plant their peas or cucumbers and that right along the outside edge of the box and they get a vertical wall which is really fun to and and you can you can make a lot of fun decorative things with that as well just having fun with a, something that's structurally important but let's make it useful as well absolutely so. and you also could use it for pest management so yeah. if you needed to throw some remake cloth over it or something to exclude some pests keep the um, deer and the and the, the chickens out of your garden beds absolutely <laughs> okay great so uh, maybe we can talk a little bit about um, you were talking about the corners about different ways that you can construct corners yeah so, let's so this this corner is the wood on the outside this corner would be the inside this would be a this would be the outside of the box. This would be the inside of the box. I lose a little bit of space with my board here. That's not a huge deal. Um, but the screws are also exposed. I'll show you on my box here. We build them with the corners on the outside. Um, one, to keep the screws intact and to make the box a little bit stronger. Okay, so, so let's take we're going to flip that. this one sideways. Yep. Okay, so I have to say, Michael, like not only is this a good structural design, but also it's really aesthetically pleasing on this raised bed. So how did you construct this corner? So this is where I need a table saw. This, this, I, I will take a table saw and cut one quarter of a, a four by four out um, to get an external frame on this box. A few reasons I do that. One, I don't see any screws. Right. All my screws are hidden. Um, and so I don't get the staining of a screw. I don't get that ugly look. It, it looks a little bit more finished this way. The other reason is this wood is now on the outside of my side wood, which gives me added strength so that it's not just the screws holding these boxes together. I'll bury this corner here a couple inches in the ground, which keeps it from bowing. And it also will give that strength so that as the dirt presses on the outside of this wood, the wood holds it in place, not just a screw. You know, screws rot, the screw holes will rot. And so the biggest problem I see with the corner similar to this is that over the time these this wood will pop off the dirt will push so hard on this that these these screws rot away and they pop off um, but with this one we've got a, a much longer lasting corner on here so if you've got the resources to use a table saw once again I can keep a corner that lasts longer and is stronger in, in, for the life of the box Great. Um, the other thing I noticed about this box is mm -hmm. that you had this awesome sitting lip that okay. we were sitting on when we started this video, um, which is really fantastic um, for gardeners to just have a resting place, but also if you have some limited mobility, um, it's a great place to come and settle and reach in and do your gardening. And so if we wanted to install a sitting lip like this, uh, what would we need to do? Well, I actually designed this because my dad's 78 and oh, he okay. needed a place to sit when he did <laughs> it. He, he didn't want to bend over. So many people ask me for boxes that are two feet tall. And it's really impractical to get that much soil, to get two or three feet of soil, or they want them waist high. And I think that this is a, a happy marriage between the two. I still get a box that has enough soil, um, but I don't have to waste, I don't have to fill three feet of soil. It's just so expensive. Um, but for this box, it's just, a, it, it's just important to measure. You know, I did it, this box is three feet by six feet, so I had to get an eight foot long board and cut it down to, to go a little bit over the edge. Um, and then this is the only place I have my exposed screws, but once again, I just make sure that I screw those into my existing boards and, and spend a little bit of time measuring and, and doing it. When I build this box, this is by far the longest period of time I spend on it, is building the top. It building takes a little bit more work and a little bit more, more uh, skill, but, it makes a long-term 
better method of using the box. I don't, I don't want to bend over all day either. So something like this with a lip. You could do it with any type of materials. I've reinforced the corner in here, which once again makes me lose a little bit of space, but it makes this corner stronger because I'm overhanging on both sides. But as you can see, it's strong enough for us to sit on, and I've had mine for five years, and they're still just as strong to sit on, and I don't have the issue of, you know, sitting on a lip edge or, or standing the entire time I use the box. Great. Okay, so um, now that we have our raised bed mm -hmm. built, mm -hmm. um, we need to position it in the garden. Mm -hmm. So um, first of all, um, it's probably uh, important to note that if you're growing edible crops, that you want it in an area of your yard that has sufficient sunlight. <laughs> so fruiting and rooting crops, things like tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, or uh, even beets, or carrots or things like that, we want to have at least six to eight hours of direct sun a day. Yeah. Um, some of the crops that we eat, the leaves, the foliage of, we can get away with a little bit less, but probably at least six hours of direct sun a day. For um, things like spinach and lettuce. For and, things yeah. like spinach and lettuce and some of those sorts of things. Um, but also when we're placing this box, uh, is it important that we level the ground when we uh, are settling it into our garden spot? So. A number of people will install boxes for have hills they put them on and so we will dig away the higher part of the hill and make sure these boxes are level. I get rivers all the time if we don't. You know you'll, you'll get a river and I don't want a river in my garden box. I want everything to be nice and flat so the water can drain straight down into the box instead of rolling to one side and, and pooling. Um, so I will absolutely get a level out when I do it and put them as level as I can get them. They don't have to be perfect. The soil will take care of a little bit of that, but they need to be as good as we can get them. Great. It's, it's practical to do it. So definitely want to try to level our boxes in our spot, even if it takes a little bit of digging away with the, up the soil or digging into a hillside yeah. to, to make sure that we can get that level. Well, and you know, Katie, the, the, a box, the depth of a box makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to grow tomatoes or, sorry, in, in, or any plant really in three or four inches of soil. A lot of people want to do boxes that are only one or two two by fours high, and I just don't recommend that for people. I want more soil than that. Uh, I want root crops especially to have plenty of space to grow, but also the taller, you know, when a box is tall like this, the soil will warm up faster. And we know that tomatoes and other plants grow based on how warm the soil is, not how warm it is outside. So if the roots of a tomato can get warmer, they'll grow faster and they'll do better. Yeah, absolutely. That's so, a great advantage to raise beds is you yeah. get to grow a little bit earlier in the growing season because you get that soil to warm up a little yeah. bit sooner. And with a so. short four inch bed, you just don't get that advantage. Okay. Yeah. All right, one other thing to think about, Katie, when you're doing um, your boxes and where you put them is access to water. Oh yeah, right. W where I'm going to get my water from for sprinklers, am I going to over spray it with the sprinklers I've got or am I going to install drip systems? Mm -hmm. I know some of the boxes you have here at the, the, the demonstration garden has some great drip systems. We should look at those. But just what am I going to do for water? How am I going to water this? And I need a hose to water the day I plant, not just the drips later on in the future. So where, where are we going to get water from and where we get that? So. Great. Okay. So um, I think we should also definitely talk briefly about different fill materials that you can use for raised bed boxes. Um, you can, of course, amend topsoil. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do that, your native soil, you want to make sure that you add uh, sufficient organic matter. Uh, to and a the, lot of it. And a lot of <laughs> it, yeah. So, you know, usually we recommend somewhere in the range of about 50% uh, native soil, 50% um, well composted, um, high quality compost material mm -hmm. amended to your boxes. You can't just put topsoil in your boxes. Yeah, and, right? a, and a lot of the cities, cities here in Utah sell composted yeah. material at a really cheap price. You can get it there. You don't have to pay for the expensive bags at the stores. You know, you can get really cheap stuff by the yard at city dumps and at other places around town. So there's a number of great places to get it. Just right. Ask your local neighbors. Ask yeah. ask your extension office where sure. they might get it. Things like that. But yep. a lot of different I, options. I that. say at least half organic matter as well. Whenever I tell my clients to get where they when they fill their boxes. So. So another option, of course, is that you can get a soilless potting mix or a mm -hmm. potting medium, which is a mix of organic matter and mm -hmm. some other materials like perlite or vermiculite. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't actually have soil in it, sand, silt, and clay. 
Mm -hmm. um, but it is uh, uh, designed to be used in containers and can also be used in raised bed boxes as well. And that's typically a little bit more expensive, but they're great. Those mixes work great. I found that I can usually get a yard of compost for about 20 bucks from the cities and I can get a yard of topsoil. I try to find weed free stuff for about the same price, 20 to 25. You can get cheaper stuff, but it's always full of weeds. So make sure you find out where, where your topsoil is coming from. Um, and if you're doing one of the, a lot of the nurseries also sell pre-mixed garden mixes right. that'll have yep. topsoil and vermiculite or perlite in them. And those are great, but they usually run about 75 to $100 a piece per yard to get those. So you can make it cheaper but those stuff that, that you get, they're really good when you get those. So I think that's great because the one thing we haven't talked about much through this video is cost. How much is it gonna no. cost a homeowner to put together one of these raised beds? So we talked a little bit about making sure that you factor in the cost of the filling material, yeah. but you also need to factor in the cost of your lumber. And yeah. so Michael, what would a box like this run us in terms of uh, lumber costs? So a, a big deal will be the type of material you use. Cedar is usually a little bit cheaper than redwood, um, but redwood from most stores you can only get it in two by material two by fours two by sixes two by eights um, a box like this size three by six out of redwood is about 150 dollars in materials um, out of cedar you can find it a little bit cheaper and if you go to something like a cedar fence board that's only a half inch thick you could probably build a box this big for about 75 to 85 dollars it's not a, a huge cost on that um, so what and, are the pros and cons of using a thicker board like this versus a thinner board like that? So the that? thinner boards, you got to do smaller boxes. I can't do an eight foot long box out of a fence board. Um, it's just, it, it, it won't hold up. Over time, that's going to bow too much. Um, also, don't just go to the big box stores or your nurseries. Look at this. Fencing companies is a great place to find alternative materials that you wouldn't normally see at a at a uh, industrial supply store right. or, a, or a building supply store. So another place you can go to shop around to look for Yeah, lumber. fencing material stores are, are a great source to find good materials that are a little bit thicker than you might find at those stores and uh, you might be able to find them for cheaper prices too because they're selling in bulk and just cedar or just redwood things. So. Great. And of course, if you don't feel like you can build your own raised bed or you don't have time to build your own raised bed or whatever it may be, there are also some um, kits that are available through um, different companies that you can purchase that will work as well. Yeah, online you can find kits. You can, you know, um, you can find people building them locally a lot of times. We build here locally, but again, you can find, uh, build, build your own or or find someone who knows what they're doing to build them for you. Right, you know I mean? absolutely. So, so. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much for coming and sharing your expertise with us today. Yeah. And I hope that we've inspired some people to go out and um, build their own raised beds. I, uh, I, I think that your boxes don't always have to be, um, they don't just have to be utilitarian. Let's make them pretty too. You absolutely. Know, spend some time, spend a little bit of extra care on your boxes and you'll have something that looks good and works for years. Absolutely. So. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, thanks again, Michael, and um, and happy gardening, and uh, and go out and build that beautiful garden in your backyard.